Okay, I have this question for you guys. Is the sum of two periodic functions always periodic? And right here, this is like an open-ended question for now, right? So if you think that the answer to this is yes, you will have to provide a proof. But if you think the answer to this is a no, you will have to come up with a counter example. And it's really interesting. If you haven't thought about this before, you should pause the video and try this first. Okay, what do you guys think? And the truth to this question is that this right here is false. This right here is not always going to be periodic, okay? And yes, a lot of times when you add up two periodic functions, even though the periods are not the same, but in the end, you still end up with a periodic result, but not all the time. I will provide you guys with a counter example, okay? And here is the easiest periodic functions that we have dealt with in the past. That's a sine function, and that's ready sign blue. So let me just put down a note on the side. When we have a function f of t, let's say we have sine of bt, right? Sine is periodic, and it has period 2 pi, right? But when we have b times t, this right here, the period is going to be 2 pi divided by b, okay? Divided by the coefficient of t. This is how we figure out the period for this part, right? So now, here is my counter example for you guys. I will tell you guys the first function, let's say f of t is equal to sine just t, okay? Sine t, like this. And based on this, we know that the period is equal to what? 2 pi over 1, right? Because this is 1t. And of course, 2 pi over 1 is just 2 pi. Right? Good. And now let's have the second periodic function. I will call this to be g of t. And when we have g of t, this time I just want to have this. And you'll see the deal. I am going to say sine of pi t in this case. And here's the reason. The first function that I have right here has a pi in the period, right? This is 2 pi. But if I don't have any multiple pi in my period, then the sum of these two is not periodic. Let me show you why. But anyway, let me just write this down for you guys to be legitimate. The period of this function is equal to, I still do 2 pi, but I will have to divide it by this pi. So after all that, we, guess we just get 2 for this period right here, right? Now, here is the question that you have to ask yourself. This is how you deal with the sum of two periodic functions. Is it possible to find two integers? Of course, non-zero, of course, okay? So that you multiply the first integer with 2 pi, and that will be the same as the second integer times 2. It's not possible because the first one has the pi, the other one doesn't have the pi. So integers are not enough. So here's the deal. I'll write this down for you guys. If this is not possible, then that means the sum of these two functions, it's not periodic. So I will just write this down for you guys. When you add up these two functions, this function here is not periodic. It doesn't have any period. Okay, so now let me show you guys how we can find a period for the sum of two periodic functions when the sum is still periodic. So let's take a look at this right here. Let's say f of t is equal to sine of 3t plus sine of 4t. First of all, we have to know the period for the first one and the second one, right? So let's do that. So just like earlier, the period for sine of 3t, we can just do this by, okay, let me write it down p1. This is equal to 2 pi over 3 in this case, right? And that's it. We cannot simplify this. And for the second one, sine of 4t, the period of this, I will write down p2. This will be 2 pi over 4. And this is, of course, you can reduce that to get pi over 2. And now this is how we can figure this out. I want to find a non-zero integer right here so that I want, I want to multiply this right here, 2 pi over 3. And I hope this is equal to another non-zero integer right here multiplying with pi over 2. Can we make this happen this time? Yes, because we have the pi on both sides, isn't it? 
so we have a much better chance, unlike earlier. And now we can just figure this out, and one way to do it is you kind of to play around with this. For example, on the left hand side, if I put down 3 right here, 3 and 3 cancel, I have a, well, I have 2 pi, right? And what can I do then? I can put down 4, because 4 times pi over 2, that's also 2 pi, right? So that's it, we achieved it. We have non-zero integers here and here, so that this integer times the first period is equal to the second integer times the second period. We haven't answered the question yet, though. So what is the period of this? Well, a period of this right here is just that wherever you multiply this right here, this is 2 pi. And you just have to make sure you find the smallest possible integers to make this happen, okay? Smallest positive integers to make this happen, then in this case, this right here will be a period for this particular uh, sum of two periodic functions. So here is the deal. Suppose you're running around on a track, right? And you start right here. Let's say this track is one mile, and you, it will take you, let's say, six minutes to run the track, right? To run a mile. And it will take your friend eight minutes to start from here and then run the same. Uh, same track. Now, the question is, after how many minutes that you guys are going to meet again after you're starting at the same point at the same time? Well, to do that, you have 6 and 8. You want to find integers here times integers here, right? And you can do so by saying, I can just say multiply this by 4, multiply this by 3. Because, in fact, 24 is the least common multiple of 6 and 8, right? So it's the same idea. As long as you can figure out the least common multiple, this right here, it's the time that you need. Right? After 24 minutes, after the starting, you guys will meet at the same time. The idea is, after 2 pi, um, this right here will get back to the original, this right here will also get back to the original, and they will happen at the same time. 